Hi everybody, so in video 1702 we made a methanol heater that we ran on methanol and a lot of people have asked what else will we run on apart from this stuff? Very good question. This stuff will burn with a blue flame that's difficult to see in daylight and it does get water out of the atmosphere. Now it doesn't suck water out of the atmosphere like a sponge, it will add water to it. It doesn't matter a blind bit of difference in a room heater but probably does in a high performance car. So it's fine to use this stuff. That's what we use because there are an awful lot of methanol heaters around, mostly used in books. And of course there are an awful lot of these kind of heaters around, room heaters based on bioethanol. So we've got some ethanol. It doesn't matter if it's bioethanol or ethanol. We've got some ethanol, we'll try it with that. We've also got some isopropanol alcohol, which is better known as rubbing alcohol because people rub it on their stiff bits when they're sore. you also find this used in resin 3D printing where it's used to wash the prints. So if you're doing that, you're going to have an awful lot of this dirty stuff kicking around. Those are the basic ones we're going to use. But we're also going to try something else, because if you're making biodiesel, what you get is a 50-50 mixture of methanol and glycerin that has no practical use. So we're going to mix up a mixture of uh, glycerin and methanol and give it a go to see how it actually burns. This stuff is vegetable methanol for all the <laughs> vegetable glycerin for all those vegetarians amongst us. And the final one we're going to do is a suggestion from a friend of mine called Jay-Z who made the suggestion on video 1702. And that was to mix up a mix of 40% ethanol, 40% methanol, and 20% water. He says it burns with a yellow flame but just as hot so we're going to give that one a go as well and that's all we're going to do in this video. Now the burner itself was just a piece of cake. I mean it is two cans. One where you do nothing but take the lid off and eat the contents and the other where you punch four holes in the bottom which I did with this a hole punch and a tiny hole with a nail at the top. That's all the preparation of the can that you need. I got these cans from my local store. This was a can of peas and this was a can of chili con carne that I ate over the kitchen sink with a spoon cold one night when Patty was away just like a rat. Then you've got your cans and you can line the inside of that with this stuff. This stuff is causing people a bit of a problem, it would seem. This is carbon felt. Now, I buy this as an industrial product, which is used for air filtration, and you can only buy it on rolls 2 metres long and 100 metres wide. No, nope, stop, reverse that. 100 metres long and 2 metres wide. So we have loads of it, hey? It's 5 millimetres thick. But you can buy it on Amazon, if you like. You've got to make sure that it says carbon felt. You've got to make sure that it says 100%. If it says carbon fibre, don't buy it. If it says with plastic, with weave, with support, don't buy it. It's got to be 100% carbon felt. However, any wicking material is going to work, from torn up jeans and torn up t-shirts, old bandages and cotton rolls, and even Kevlar pre-prepared wick that you can get for firebrand torches, are all going to work in something like this. This thing I think works slightly better because the heat is transferred from the uh, flame through this carbon into the oil and helps that actually burn. But you fill that up, stuff that in there, put that on there, and that is your burner made. Now we're going to do these tests and all we're going to do is start with some ethanol, put it in there, set it alight and see what happens. Now, of course I've taken the heart of the device out. We don't have the reflector or the pretty little stand because all we want to do is get an assessment of how these different fuels work. Okay, I've turned the light off so we get a better view and sometimes it can be a bit of a bug at the start, especially if you're using a heavier fuel. So if you give a squeeze of ethanol into the little lip on the can, it'll start just fine. There it is burning on ethanol. I only put about that much ethanol in there, incidentally. The advantage of ethanol is it gives a hotter flame. The disadvantage is it's very much more expensive, but the burn type is really similar to methanol. You can see the blue flame, you can see it heating up this... Uh, oh, hey, <laughs> careful! It's <laughs> heating up the surround so it becomes a radiant heater. That's ethanol. Now let's try IPA. Isopropyl and alcohol. IPA. Well, this is the IPA. As you can see, it's a more aggressive flame. It's more yellow. It's certainly hotter, but uh, IPA, rubbing alcohol, is again more expensive. But if you happen to use a lot of rubbing alcohol, like you're into 3D resin printing and have it kicking around, or you just like to rub yourself a lot, then you're going to have this stuff around and be able to use it in a heater. Okay, next one is my Jay-Z mix, which I'm quite excited about. Remember, 
40% ethanol, 40% methanol, 20% water. Let's get that in there and see how that burns. And there is the JC mix. Now I can be honest, it took a little bit of getting going. I had to use the ethanol in the lip trick to get it going. It's obviously a nice yellow flame, it's a little bit more aggressive, but I'm guessing it's a good balance between cost and heat. Because remember, as these things go up in weight, they go up in heat. So there's the Jay-Z mix, which I like on so many levels, actually. We have to thank Jay-Z for suggesting it, but uh, isn't Jay-Z a rapper? And <laughs> a Jay-Z mix, here we are, burning music. <laughs> A few folks have been asking how to put this out, it's actually simple enough. You're basically putting out a large candle. So pick off the top, pick off the mantle, and then you get yourself something to snuff it with. Now I've got a bit of fire blanket here, but obviously if you make a tin that goes over there, you'll snuff it just like a large candle, and you snuff the flame. And there we go, it's out. Right, now the really exciting one for me Vegetable glycerin and methanol. And there is the glycerol and methanol. It's tinged with yellow, but still essentially a bright blue flame. Now, this isn't really everyday sort of stuff. It's if you're making biodiesel and you've got a ton of this around and you're claiming you're recycling it, but it's ending up somewhere else, you've now got a way to use it actually as a valuable heat source. Okay, so that's a surprising wide range of fuels this thing can work on. And as I say, I'm not recommending one or the other. I'm showing alternatives. And of course, there's an awful lot of alternatives we didn't look at. Now, we looked at lightweight fuels. We're going to be looking at heavyweight fuels in a different video. But in response to some of the comments, you've got to remember that this, it's an open flame heater. So you have to treat it in the same way you would any other open flame heater. It doesn't matter if it's a paraffin heater, a color gas heater, a wood burning stove, or an open fireplace. You treat them all the same. Somebody said, it's dangerous for children. Any fire is dangerous for children. You would not let your toddler play around your wood burning stove. So equally, don't let your toddler play around this. Now, when you using an open flame, when you're burning something like this, of course it's burning because of the oxygen. So the room, should be ventilated. Now we're not talking about throwing open your doors and windows in a howling gale. It's not that kind of ventilation. It's the same kind of ventilation you would give any other open flame heater. Now if it's in a um, fireplace, of course, it doesn't have ventilation. The fireplace has a flue that carries away the gases. You still need to ventilate a room. So whenever you're using open flames like this, you have room ventilation and it's something like a slip a mailbox called a ventilator. And that's all you actually need for these kind of things. Of course, you never burn something like this without having monitors. So you should have a CO2 monitor and a CO monitor anyway. But if you've got gas central heating, they're in your boiler room. So you should have those if you're using auto open flames. There's nothing special about it. Treat it like you would any other open flame heater. Now, you'll notice mine sat on a tile. It's sat on a tile because it's it's an open flame! They would not sit it in a barrel of petrol or in some wool or something like that. Just the same sensible kind of precautions. Some people have been talking about emissions from this and it's true enough, if you burn a fuel incompletely, you get emissions. The predominant emissions you get from alcohols are, are carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. You get the monoxide when it's incomplete and that's why you have a CO monitor. There's nothing incomplete about this combustion incidentally. One guy said it gives off formaldehyde and I thought that is one of the most ill-informed comments I've heard. It's true that methanol is used for, for formaldehyde production but it's used in con controlled conditions across a catalyst. It's an open flame burning as hot as you can get it. So, don't worry too much when people come out with these memes. It's the same kind of common sense that you've got to apply to anything, really. If you're worried about that sort of stuff, then put it in a flue, put it in a chimney. Make sure you don't burn it inside if it scares the bejesus out of you. If you're burning it on the inside, then follow the same precautions that you would for any open flame. Anyway, I thought I'd mention that stuff because so many people ask about it. But the heater itself will work off a surprising range of fuels and we're going to explore some more. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do remember to like and subscribe.